All right. Nobody's here yet. Let's try this again. I'm hoping everybody can get us back on. I don't know what happened there, but the internet just crashed for the entire house. So probably too many people on the network at the same time. So what's up, Michael Mama? Don't know what happened, but we had a good number of people on. I hate to lose it like that. All right. Looks like people are coming back on. Cool. I don't know what I mean, guys. I walk outside and I've got signal again. But inside in my own kitchen, I don't have signal. Don't know what's up. Saw me running like crazy. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I was trying to not drop anything. What's up, Ben? Romano. Good. I'm glad everybody's here. Said the exact same thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's going to run outside to get signal. Yeah, I have no idea. It's not messed up now. Uh, I'm just reading what people are saying. Yeah, I don't understand why I'm getting better signal outside than I am inside. It's the, the router's inside the house. Mm -hmm. But I have almost full signal here. I have to stand the whole time. I'll probably sit and talk to you guys and probably set up a site or the thing. But the hair? What about the hair? Is it bad? What's up, Nancy? Welcome to the chat. I'm not sure what happened, guys. Is Toasty back in yet? Because I was answering Toasty's question about how to breed new strains. What's up, Dune? Hanging up? What things have we got hanging up? You talking about all that stuff back there? Or that right there? That's wood. That right there is kiwi vine. Uh, these things here are the porch rails, the porch supports. Oh, my hair's getting long. You're copying the link for everyone. Thank you, Michael, mom. I appreciate you taking care of that. And yeah, it is getting long. Probably time to cut it, but I'm not going to cut it. I want to look like a metal head by the time this is all done. So uh, a buddy of mine gave me four morels. So uh, morels are popping here. He just came by today, picked up a, some plugs that he's using uh, in the woods, and uh, he brought me four little morels. So I'm gonna clone one of them and uh, eat the rest. But, so toasty, as soon as you're in here, man, let me know. But. Because I want to go back to his question about breeding mushrooms. <clears throat> but if you guys have any other questions in the meantime, I'm happy to answer them. I know we only have like, we got like well less than half the people that we had in there. But the mossy mosher <laughs> for the going into the mosh pits. I could do that. Hey, if anybody knows how to make a coat out of moss, I would wear a moss coat. Thought we may have spied a lion's mane way up in a tree today. Need by Knox to see it. Heck yeah, man. That's cool. Sorry, I did to go with the link. No, no, don't worry. Don't, don't you be sorry. People don't need to apologize to me. But I like this idea of being the mossy mosher. That'd be cool. You got any input for going into CSAs? My partner farmers want me to get in theirs as a weekly add-on option. It's great, man. Like, I'm doing it right now. It's a little bit more work than selling to restaurants, but not much. Just give yourself plenty of time to get there and get everything done. Mushroom coat would be cool. Um, but yeah, man, is, is any put for going into CSAs? I think it's great because right now, if I can sell through my CSAs, I only have to sell half my crop and I'll be making the same amount of money. And already uh, this week, like the, the CSA went live yesterday. What am I at right now? I can't remember how many kits we sold, but a couple hundred bucks worth of kits, you know? So that's that's not bad. If I can keep this up, um, I'll be, be doing better than I was before the virus hit. So, And if that's the case, I can bring all my employees off their uh, unpaid vacation. So let's see. What do we have? 
sold 14 quarter pounds in about 12 hours at five dollars so i made about 70 bucks off uh quarter pound orders i mean that's pretty easy just weigh it out throw it in a paper bag fold it up weigh it out throw it in a paper bag samantha and i can get that done in just a few minutes could you talk a bit about the daily process with respect to the path of uh the oh gosh the path of creation in other words if your place burned to the ground and you started over is it to buy a spore syringe, then LC or agar, or then to grain spawn, then multiply the grain spawn to fruiting blocks? Um, squirreled away. So you're asking if I had to start all over, like what would I order? I'd probably go with liquid culture next time around. And I would go no HEPA filter in the beginning. I would buy bags and, and jars and things like that uh, for working with, um, what is it? Working with... Uh, Sorry, the, the girls are in there talking. Um, I would start with the jars of the self-healing injector ports, and then I would just work liquid culture to self-healing injector ports, whether that be on bags and jars, and then go from there to my bulk substrates. Um, maybe with straw or something like that, but uh, that I would go with liquid culture. And then you can use agar to test the liquid culture, but you can run entirely off liquid culture uh, from liquid culture to grain. You can actually make mushroom coats, my grandmama, because that would be interesting. Uh, Woohoo, I got it back playing. Good, Jeffrey, welcome back. I'm trying to get it. Uh, when Toasty gets back, I'll, I'll start talking about his, uh, his question again. I know it cut out part of the way. I'm a long way to being ready for that. I'm just curious about planning, pricing, that sort of thing. So, uh, Ben, if you're asking about pricing for CSAs, definitely do it more. Like we do $5 a quarter pound, uh, $9 a half pound, $16 a full pound, and $80 if they're willing to take a bulk case of like a restaurant order case for the CSA. Starting small grow in my house, temp is 75 to 76 degrees. Blue oyster looks ready, but will not pin. Tried cold chalk, but no luck. Is my house too warm for blues? How long are you giving it, Eric? Because it's usually seven to eight days before you see pins. CSA, I don't know that. Uh, CSA is community supported agriculture. Excuse me, that shake. Um, community supported agriculture is basically, typically the, the old model, the traditional model that I've seen for a CSA is somebody will pay you $400. And then every week, like you have so many shares that you're going to sell. So you, let's say you sell 10 shares for $400 each. That means you pull in $4,000 at the beginning of the season. And then you deliver their share of... Uh, produce to your, your CSA drop off. And you do that every week and you have a time and a date and a place. And then they just come in every week they get it. And that means that uh, it allows them to get a lot more produce for a lot less money and allows the farmer to get a lot of money up front um, so that they can, you know, meter that out throughout the rest of the season. Uh, I really love CSAs. I think they're great. Um, but the one I'm through, people pay a fee to become a part of, they get a basic package and then they have add-ons that they can order week by week. And that's what we're on right now is the, Ordering week by week. What are you using for packaging mushrooms for retail customers? Uh, paper bags, Jenny. Just uh, just giant sandwich bags from Walmart. It's been one of the cheapest, best options I've come across. That The mushrooms stay good for a long time in a paper bag. I got you, Michael, Mama. What are those hanging over your left shoulder? Those right there. Oh, up there? Uh, those are, are uh, rock climbing... Uh, train like training tools like they've got different grips on them you can do like i think they that's called like a milk jug grip and it's a big strong grip you can pull yourself up by them twist however you want uh then you've got like the little grips here and then you can even turn it um and try to get different types of grips on it and it's just a grip trainer you hang from it You still ship grain spawn. Nancy, I am. We weren't going to, but we brought it back because Samantha and I are catching back up on that stuff fast. Uh, she's helping me out. And we're reformatting the business to be much more resilient to shocks in the future. And grain spawn is absolutely a part of that. So we have grain spawn going and it is definitely back. Toasty, you're back. Hey, Andrew, I'm back. I was checking the beginning of your second stream to see if you answered the question. I did. If you want me to go and do it again, I absolutely will. I'm happy to just, just go through. I actually answered the whole thing and then realized that uh, our internet crashed. Just let me know if you want me to continue on with it. 
Can't recall if this has been discussed before, but do you have any op opinions about supplements using myceliated grain instead of dried fruit bodies? I think that I think that myceliated grain is a great way to go. And I think fruit bodies are a great way to go. And if you can get both, you should get both. If you can only get myceliated grain, you should get that. I don't know how in the world anyone's going to get uh, agaricon fruit, uh, you know, fruiting in their their la their grow rooms or anything like that. So I don't or chaga, but you can grow the mycelium of that. In fact, I'm about to release a medicinal pack today or tonight uh, that's going to include uh, uh, cordyceps militaris, uh, agaricon, uh, turkey tails, reishis, and a whole bunch of others. It's going to have nine different cultures in it. Um, same price as my other bulk packs, just all medicinal species. The shiitake is included in that as well. Shiitake and a single oyster. Uh, both of those are very good for your heart health. A lot of studies about oyster mushrooms and cholesterol levels. You guys should check that out. Um, but Tyson, I think it's good to get both if you can. I've actually been wondering about uh, making liquid culture slurries and then taking those, getting the mass amount of mycelium that you get out of that slurry and then just drying the, my, the mycelium and having it um, encapsulated. But you'd have to grow out a lot to fill capsules. What did I answer, Jenny? Sorry. I'm bogging down again. Great. What is your liquid culture composed of? Uh, oh, no, I lost your question, man. My liquid culture is composed of... Uh, Crap, what is this? Uh, what is it again? <laughs> oh, I forgot the recipe all of a sudden. It's basically five parts corn dextrose, um, corn sugar dextrose, uh, one part malt extract agar, and then 500 milliliters of water. I sent Toasty the link. Don't know what happened. Wayne said he is mowing. Well, Wayne needs to get his butt in here and help me. You can buy a mushroom burial suit. I'm okay with that, Rowan. Absolutely. My first thoughts about a mossy coat send me to Mossy Gilly of Epaulettes. Deer Hunter makes some sick full moss jackets. That, yes. Let's get me one. I love Gilly suits. I used to have one. My my second son um, had a ghillie suit that he bought with his birthday money one year. And we would go uh, hiking and stuff. And he'd just run far ahead on the trail and hide somewhere. And you would never see him. He'd come and attack you and stuff. It was good fun. Uh, and then he play, we play like hide and seek with all the neighborhood kids, and he'd put that ghillie suit on at night, and they they would walk right over him, walk right by him, all that kind of stuff. So, so they should have CSAs here. Going to check into that. They, yeah, I mean, as far as I know, CSAs are pretty widespread nowadays. Check it out. Um, and if there's not one, maybe you can start one. But definitely look into CSAs. How many times by hour you change the air in your room chamber? I don't know by the hour, but it's, I replace it twice every five minutes, about once every two and a half minutes. Uh, Michael, Mama, where did from where did you send me? I'm here. <laughs> yes, please. Can you? Yeah, I can repeat it, man. Absolutely. Let me get to Jeffrey's thing here. Just got a wicked central eagle blower fan. Should I run air circulation the entire the time of the grow box? Um, you don't want it to dry out, so do it until until it starts to dry out, and then back it off some. And yeah, so toasty. The the answer here. Um, yeah, I do. There's also a bulk culture pack that is uh, Andrew bread only culture pack, a bulk pack coming soon. So, and if I don't know if you heard about the cool touch one or not, but that's going to be one of the leading cultures in it. If uh, as long as it passes this commercial test, which I don't have any reason why it wouldn't. Um, yeah, so scraping both spores and a cross pattern on the dish. So when you do that, you've got a, a cross pattern there, a cross pattern there, right? Um, you've already taken your, your so two spore prints. Flame sterilize, cool in agar, scratch a spore print, go across your dish. Flame sterilize, cool in agar, scrape across your sp or other spore print, and then go the opposite direction for your hash marks or whatever, your uh, streak. There we go. Um, now, whenever you have, wherever you had those cross sections, so you got here, there's a, a path going this way and a path going that way, you very likely have a cross in that section. So you sector that out, put it in a dish, let it grow out some, you look at all the different types of growth and you isolate by sectoring each one of those out into a new plate. Then you take that to a grain, each one to a grain master uh, and you can go straight from the grain master to substrate from there and test each one. 
And that's 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 as easy as that, man. I mean, it's very, very simple with oysters. When you get into something like uh, portobellos, portobellos are actually hard to breed because most of the spores that they produce have all of the genetic information they need in them to produce a new strain right away. So they don't actually need a mate to have a fully fleshed out. I think it's only like 1% of their spores have half the information. The rest of it is, is fully fleshed out information just recombined with themselves. Now, um, you have easier uh, strains. Like oysters are very easy to cross. Um, there's a ton of different colors. This is why I chose oysters for my first, my, my how to learn on, on the breeding. Um, because you cross a blue and a white with, and you get all these different shades of blue, you know that you're getting crosses. You know what I'm saying? So there's everything from meatiness of the cap. Like I, I've thrown away hundreds of oyster strains that didn't meet snuff to me because they had bad stems or not like really thin, easy to break caps or my, my, or not aggressive enough. Um, so I've got all these different metrics I go off of. And as long as they meet those metrics, I grow them out and um, continue testing them until I go to a commercial test. And the commercial test is where I do three or four commercial blocks uh, alongside a bunch of other oyster mushrooms to see how they compare in speed, uh, colonization, uh, texture, and all that stuff with the, the strains, with other strains. You're welcome, Tyson. I'm here. I can help. <laughs> I know you can, Michael. Mom, I appreciate it. Ever do the paintball thing? What paintball thing? You're going to have to tell me what the paintball thing is. When do we get to see more of the new warehouse? B. Smith, I am working on it, man. Uh, my, I had to put my employees on like a week hold. And thankfully, we got Laura. She's working back today. I'm hoping to get Jason back in in the uh, beginning of next week and then get my uh, web crew coming back on after that. And each, I'm hoping like within, by the end of next week, I can get everybody back online. So... If that happens, then you'll see it very soon. Um, otherwise, I mean, uh, you can follow my Instagram. I'm usually I'm sharing stuff with it a lot. Uh, I'm my, at Myco Miner uh, on Instagram. That's M Y C O M I N E R. Uh, but Moss Creek Mushrooms uh, is you know the business page, and it reposts a lot of my personal stuff. So you can check that too. How do you know your nitrogen content? I grow on 80% coffee, 20% straw by weight. Are there any supplements I can add to this to help grow their mushrooms, gypsum? That I don't know. I haven't done coffee tech in a long, long time. Um, maybe, um, let's see. Okay, so the best way to do is look up the nitrogen content of coffee, whatever the nitrogen content of straw is by dry weight then you can guess what your nitrogen content is by taking that amount of weight and then, you know, figuring out the nitrogen content, the percentage of that. There you go. Done. Easy. It takes a bit to pound out the mycelium to make them, but it is very possible. I bet it is. Pound out. <laughs> Sorry. It's been more than 10 minutes. Cool touch sounds exciting. Andrew only cultures. That's cool too. Heck yeah, man. I'm very excited about it. What's up, wasp? You're looking awful aggressive at me. Last thing I want is to get stung today, man. I've had enough of this week. Let's see. Oh, it's doing it again. It's starting to go all start, stop buffering. Dang it. Okay. Well, let me know if it continues doing start stops. What's up, Daryl? You were talking about camo and remind me of my younger days when we used to shoot each other up in the woods with paintball guns. Oh, okay. So you're asking if I just played paintball. Yeah, I actually absolutely did paintball back in the day. I loved it. I miss it. I don't feel like kids get hurt enough. These days, we just got to stay wide, shelter in place. Hey, speaking of some in info, right? You guys got this whole thing going on. Hit me up when you have a bit. That sounds good, Michael. Mom. I'll try. Um, meant to silence that. Oh, that's my brother. Hey, guys, the medicinal bulk pack is up. Just got, uh, and Nancy started following me. What's up, Nancy? Um, so yeah, the medicinal bulk pack is up on the website. Uh, you guys can get it now. So hopefully I will have some other announcements going out, but anyone who wants a medicinal bulk pack, uh, it's got my NNG oyster in it. So that's about the same way mine looks like you are what you eat. Uh, it's probably my brother, Samantha. 
Uh, oh, so the shelter in place. So yeah, if, if you're a farm though, you are an essential business. You can move freely. Um, I have the link for it, Michael Mama. I'm going to get one to all my employees to download a pass from the Department of Homeland Security so that we're essential business. Hey, Laura. Hi. You want to say hi? You don't have to. Hi. That's Laura. <laughs> she, she came back today after her week-long vacation. So, my your Elmo shirt. I like it. <laughs> Lance is gonna be sorry he missed you. I'm sure. Oh. Every time he gets on here, he tells me to tell you hi. He said, "Tell tell a hot redhead I'll say hello." Hi. Tell so. hi for me. Well, and I will. For the record, I don't even like Elmo. You don't even like Elmo? Like That's why it's a work shirt. <laughs> okay. It's not for me. It's for other people. There you go. Oh well, you know, I like Elmo. Thank you, Laura. Probably didn't like that ambush. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Oh, anyways, Michael Mama, yeah, you can get a, a Department of Homeland Security. Like, I mean, just you, you know, you're an essential service. You should just have to say it. You shouldn't need a pass or anything like that. Um, but we're making Mossy Creek Mushrooms passes. You know, Mossy Creek Mushrooms employee essential services kind of thing, just so that we've got something for people, like an employee card, basically. Uh, I don't know, Miser. I don't use gypsum at all. Yeah, Michael Mama, I do have a dirty mind. <laughs> Been reading a bit about plant tissue culturing this week. Since we have flow hoods and sterile techniques, seems like a good adjacent skill to have. Tyson, I've been doing the same thing this week. I have a book called uh, Plants from Test Tubes. I'm not getting any buffering here, bud. Okay, cool. And then Tyson, yeah, I mean, so my first thing I'm going to be doing with that is uh, washing uh, some tomato seeds growing out some tomato X plants um, when, and then going to the rooting stage. And when I'm at the rooting stage, I plan on injecting wine cap. Go ahead and inject a wine cap liquid culture at the base of the roots and then see if I can observe it grow anywhere in specific. Uh, if the LC doesn't work, then I will probably grow wine cap over toothpicks and then insert toothpicks with some forceps. So, yeah, yeah, you are what you eat. Yeah, the Maya Garicon gets a funky white, yellow, and green look to it. Oh, dude, I got shot in the ground, like in chess from my junk and my inner thigh paintball. Oh, gotcha. Dude was behind a tree like so. Oh, oh, nope. My dad shot me in the butt one time. I had my butt sticking out behind one of the, behind the cover. Really taught me to make sure that I'm really, really behind cover. Because he managed to get it right where, you know, when you start showing that plumber's crack, which thankfully I don't do anymore. Thank, thank you, undershirts. But woohoo! What's woohoo? Well, groin and pounding out. Please send it to me, huh? Send what to you, Michael Mama? Oh, the link. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll get it to you in a little bit. Yay for the medicinal bulk pack. I'll be ordering today. Well, thank you, Jenny. And I told you I would get it. I would tell you when it came up. <laughs> I can just guess here's, here's the where I do it. The pass, I mean. Yeah, absolutely, Michael Mama. I'll get you one. Do it, the Kosovo I sent you. Do oh yeah, okay. We can do some uh, explants of Kosovo. In fact, I should do that just to have it in my my like culture bank. We have a plant plant culture bank of explants that way. I wonder how long you can keep um, plants in the explant phase, like in the refrigerator, like you do mushroom cultures. It might be a while. I'm going to ignore that, Jeffrey. Just cause I don't want to get in trouble with my wife. All right, now. <laughs> she said, "All right, now." <laughs> oh man! Well, shoot, guys, if the internet connection was any stronger. I'd try to walk around the garden with you or something. You'll never be without that way. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. If you've got all the, if you've got it like in in tissue culture, <laughs> Jeffrey said, "Sorry, Sam." <laughs> um. Yeah, the let's see the if I had it in X plant and I could keep it all the time in cold storage, and I could just pull from it whenever, and it wouldn't matter if I had the seeds. So thankfully, tomatoes are, are. I mean, it would be a genetic monopoly in my field, but that's okay. I mean, you know, for the most part. <laughs> Robert said, "This is a weird time to get back in the chat." No kidding, Robert. <laughs> oh man. Ear and neck shots are the worst in paintball. Trust me, the Adam's apple shuts you the moss down. I bet it does, man. I never got shot in the 
the uh, Adam's apple. I have got shot in the side of the neck. I never had an ear shot. I um, always wore a mask that covered my ears. Oh, I mean, I, I did get shot one time in the side of the head, and it, like, the vents, it striped my ear. But, and it bruised it pretty good. What, Samantha? I almost had Samantha did almost get me in the butt crack once. She could have, and she decided to have mercy. That poor thing should never have mercy on me. Oh, whoa, that sounds like a cool, very cool experiment. I thought you might like that, Tyson. I've, I've been thinking about that, but um, I thought about holding that one close to my chest. But, man, I've got too many experiments, too little time. So there's very few things that uh, – there are very few things that I'm going to hold close to my chest just anyways, ex you know, except the things that I want to specialize on. So that's not something I'm going to hold. Lol, I'm watching, I'm watching. Huh? <laughs> Michael Mama said, yeah, Jeff, watch out, lol. And then he said, I'm watching, I'm watching. Thoughts on media recipes for tissue culture? I don't have any yet, Tyson. Um, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I thought that I might. Um, so, okay, I've been thinking about it a lot. I don't know a lot about it, so I don't know if any of this is going to work. But I have thought about putting a little bit of master's mix in the bottom of each culture tube, like I do now. Um, not for my explants, but during the rooting phase. Uh, trying to give the wine cap something. If I can inject it down into that mass, then it'll give it a base to grow from. So that's something I've been thinking about as far as the media goes. Uh, for plants, now, um, what I'm thinking about doing, I have a premix for, for most plants. And then I thought, uh, you know, I can buy hormones from different places for the different, uh, the different stages that I want to do. And then when it comes to, like, rooting out, uh, growing uh the, like for the media, for the nutrition, I was thinking about doing a hydroponic uh, seed starting mix for the explants. I'm trying that to see what happens. So, uh, Lowell Robert, you missed it. Andrew started it. I didn't start it. Daryl said, I have your mushrooms packaged up. What? Uh, you talking to me, Daryl? What mushrooms? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Sorry, man. Maybe I'm, I'm that's probably just the brain fart. She's too nice. She should have done it. I know Samantha should have shot me in the butt crack, but she didn't. You should outsource those experiments to us. Miser, I'm trying to exp uh, to do some of it for sure. Robert Charles, I like Elmo. For sure, man. Being shot point blank is the worst, especially if your buddy jacked his pressure on his gun and it was friendly fire. Yeah, man. I always hated it when people did that kind of stuff. That was one of the things I didn't like about paintball was sometimes the... Like this, I played with a guy one time, and he just he would always freeze his uh, paintballs. And man, I just I stopped playing with him. I wouldn't play with him anymore after he did that. I gotta wait on my lights to get in some time in freaking April. But then, oh my gosh, April, things just keep getting pushed back, don't they? But then I got six trays ready to go. Just need to find poopies, poopies. Do I know any good poop suppliers? Uh, you can get cow manure compost, K-O-W, from Lowe's. Comes in a yellow bag. 100% agree, Robert. <laughs> That's funny. Had a bruise on my ribs about a foot in diameter. Oh, God. Yeah, man, no thank you. Yo, Elmo. <laughs> All right now, Robert. Uh, let's see. Man, I'm having a hard time reading this light. How can one ship items and not leave the house and be exposed. Um, what are you talking about? I don't have to leave the house. You schedule a pickup and they come pick it up and you can leave it outside. You don't even have to knock on the door or talk to them. <laughs> wood figures. Oh, the wood figurine mushrooms. Yeah, Daryl, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you can schedule a pickup uh, through USPS.com. Um, schedule a pickup and then they'll drop them off here and then I won't, I won't have to talk to them. So, if I take a clone, then fruit it, does it make any sense to clone once more from new fruit bodies, or would I just be you'd be getting the exact same genetics over and over again? So, yeah, Amanda, uh, we do have plans for the bagger. They're still being made, but I will tell you guys that with the COVID-19 stuff, the bagger plans have been pushed a good ways back. We were planning on working on that while we were building out the baggers at the new warehouse, but... As of right now, we're selling baggers, and anything that is not directly related to Mossy Creek Mushrooms' uh, financial survival has been pushed back. So um, that means that anything like we were built, like, I mean, we could have sold the plans for sure. Um, 
but we've had to push stuff back just because hey, my employees are on a basically a two week unpaid vacation, uh, um, which is not a vacation. It's an unwanted vacation. And uh, with them being on hold for a couple of weeks, we are just trying to get all of our sales lines switched from restaurants to individuals, which means we're trying to get online stuff uh, completely ironed out. We're trying to get CSAs, local pickup options. I've been handling people coming all day, um, dropping their stuff out there, letting them pick it up, drop the money off and going forward like that. So bagger plans are on hold. I'm sorry. See you, Tyson. Sorry, man. Yeah, shoot me an email, mossycreekmushrooms at gmail.com. Yo, Andrew, good to see you, man. Good, good to see you too, John. You would ever grow chicken of the woods. I have grown chicken of the woods. Have you ever tried eating it? I love it. I hunt it every year. Curious about your thoughts on the species in general. Um, yes, I have grown it, and I grew it because I hunt it, and I hunt it because I love it. So um, I will tell you, though, the problem I had is that we had 12-pound bags or blocks, and we were only getting... Um, you want the camera? Look at that. I can, now I can take a... No, you can't see. There we go. Now I can take a picture. A pretty picture. Um, but I was only getting like a quarter pound of fruit off a 12-pound block. So, Michael Mama says, Daryl, do it on USPS. Print all your labels and leave outside. That's exactly the way I do my liquid cultures and stuff now so that I don't have to get in contact with people. Um... And, you know, we can ship out everything safely. We take precautions on everything now. I have uh, autoimmune, you know, problems. And so I try to make sure that this COVID-19, I know I'm going to get it at some point, but I don't want to get it when everybody else has got it in the, because I'm going to be weak to it if I do get it. Though, I mean, I have O positive blood. I'm, you know, that's supposed to be protective in some measure. Cool. I'll shoot you an email at some point. Uh, with some things I figured out on tissue culturing. Got a split for now. See you all next time. Yeah, Tyson, like I said, mossycreekmushrooms at gmail.com if you're still on here. Thoughts on outdoor beds for chanterelles, morel, matsutake. So chanterelles, my understanding, are mycorrhizal. So you would need their host species. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if you guys can see this. But that's uh, the picture Samantha just took with my phone of the black poplar she's cooking. Are you cooking that for lunch? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's my favorite mushroom eat oh my gosh the black poplar is my favorite to eat that's going oh, i'm so excited and i can smell those roasted onions it's just wafting out the window <sighs> um okay morels there are people who are getting certain types of morels i think it's the esculante or maybe it's americano now um that's really good stuff uh but you you can fruit those or maybe it's the burn or i can't remember somebody there's some morel that you can make beds for um, and Matsutake is a uh, mycorrhizal with pines, so I wouldn't try to do it. If I was going to do beds, which I do, um, wine cap, um, there's a lot of people that do sacred mushroom beds, um, bluets, Namiko, um, I'm trying to think what else there is. So they went past prime, and we end up with these really, really fibrous, like, Little, stems you can make antlers oh man <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you i would love them and turn them into powder so i could totally see myself as some sort of like gonna waste it, but dionysus yeah. god picture <laughs> with uh black poplar antlers i'd love that you should make that of me samantha okay. hey and being a dionysian god i can my big belly fits in it well uh, sorry, Firenox, I don't ship to Austria. I wish I did, but I'm not shipping to Europe yet, man. And, and John, going back to you, do I think there's any business potential there? Absolutely. Um, but probably not in the mushrooms themselves, probably in mother patches for other people to grow. That's what Samantha and I used to do with wine cap. We would uh, do a lasagna garden bed, uh, pour hardwood fuel pellets through there, and then like compost and every other things, inoculate it with a uh, peg spawn that we made for wine cap, and then... A uh, couple times a year, we would have these massive, or sorry, a few times a year, we'd go out there and we'd dig holes through the bed, uh, like dig a hole, skip another hole size piece, dig another hole, just throw the layers in, like you can still see the layers, like shovel it right into a polyfill bag, tie it off, poke an air hole, and then we would sell those like $20, $30 a piece, and then fill refill the holes with hardwood fuel pellets. 
and then the mycelium would grow in from the other sides there, fill in that area, start rotting it down. And then in a couple of few weeks, you can take the other sections, do it again, and just keep doing that over and over again. Well, neat to buy a printer now. Oh, well, sorry, Daryl. Uh, I mean, you can go to the post office, man, and kind of just keep your distance, wear a mask or something like that. Um, or if you want to wait, Daryl, I completely understand. I just, I am eager to get those mushrooms, man. They're beautiful. I assume you turned those on a lathe yourself. Um, I have a wood lathe. I'm thinking about trying my hand at it. I keep hearing you say a 12 pound block. I bought 60 pounds of rye. Do you think I should use 12 pound bags or smaller since I'm going to trays? Uh, so Jeffrey, um, we do five pound spawn bags typically, though we oftentimes do like a 10 pound bag of grain spawn, but 12 pound blocks are the, the substrate that we're doing. So um, if you're doing trays, oh, there's a bee that has flown in the house. Samantha does not like bees. Eh, it looks like it's going out the other window. Um, I need to get the screens put back up on my windows. Um, so anyways, I, I think that uh, you could use a five pound bag and probably inoculate a whole bunch of trays uh, out of one five pound bag. But you're, I mean, you're talking like a, a pound or two of grain that has been soaked and therefore weighs five pounds. So what grow bags do I use, Benjamin? I use, uh, I buy them from Seth Fisher at mushroommediaonline.com. Um, I use the XLS-A. It's the ones with the 0.5 micron patch for my fruiting box. It's the XLS series. Read great article about getting medicinal chemicals from LC. Conclusions, no chem and liquid. Um, great article about getting medicinal chemicals from LC. Conclusions, no chem and liquid, just in mycelium. More sugar is stronger. Added aminos was stronger. Strength higher in seven days than dropped. Interesting, Eric. That's very interesting. So, Samantha, you just... You're very welcome. So more sugar is stronger. That's interesting. I was wondering if you needed to add other nutrients like uh, maybe wood or something to get them to produce uh, higher amounts of medicinal uh, qualities. <laughs> You're headed this way too, my mama. Come on. Come on for lunch. I mean, it'll be cold by the time you get here. Interested in your foray into growing my taki? Well, Rowan, as soon as I get any results, I will be showing my progress. Oh my gosh, Samantha. Is that the black poplars cooking smell or are you cooking meat? That smells like meat. And that's why I like black poplar. It's like the beef of mushrooms. Thank you very much. What are your thoughts on taking an LC injecting spores into the LC? Do you suspect the genetics would change for better or worse for crapshoot? Uh, I've had great results going uh, a couple of drops of spore solution into an LC. Uh, you do have higher contamination rates, but you, uh, it is weird. Um, I typically get one strain that's like dominant um, and not like, it's not a very good mix of stuff. So it's usually like one strain wins out and beats everything else. The three species I mentioned are all mycorrhizal, actually. I'm really curious about trying to plant a bed with spawn and the host species to make it work. Yeah, so that'll work if you can do the host species with it. Um, I've actually been interested if you can get uh, younger host species and then plant the spawn of your type. And would it then support fruitings because you beefed it up the spawn, so to speak. Onions and garlic in a hot pan is the best smell in the world except bacon and Chinese food and possibly Elmo. Laura is going to murder you. Probably not really. Um, onions and garlic in a hot pan is the best smell, but that's not even what she, she's not even put that. Uh, the, onion, the onions are roasted in the roasting in the oven right now. And then that and the mushrooms. Oh my gosh. The black poplar is crazy smelling. It's, it's one of the richest mushrooms I've ever eaten. So how do you slow your grain spawn so you can use it at a later date? Put it in the fridge. Are you growing and selling the black poplar? I am. Um, I don't think I've got the LC up yet, but I'm about to have it. I just took pictures yesterday of all the ones I've got growing in the grow room. And I have the liquid culture made up. So uh, I've got to get the information to Melanie. And then if she can put it up for me, uh, I'll have it on the website, hopefully tonight. Black poplar, the other, other, other white meat. 
think it's the other, other, other dark meat. <laughs> Can you please wax philosoph philosophic, philosophic on what exactly is a strain and what they are and what or what are they called when you start selecting clones? Because those are not strains, right? Some kind of substrain. Okay. Yeah, uh, it is important to kind of get that information out. Let me see. I'll tell you what, man. I absolutely will. Do hey, Jason, what's going on, man? I'll tell you what, if you guys will give me a second, I'll go set up a spot for me to sit down, and we'll talk on the back porch, and I might get better signal, number one, and then number two, it'll give me a place to sit down while we talk. Why don't you just come with me? Got all these boxes that uh, are ready for the fire. Oops. Actually, Samantha will probably use these for a lasagna garden. Trying to survive the apocalypse. I feel you, Jason. Me too. So, Jason, things are getting better, man. I'm hoping to have you back to work next week sometime. Okay. Exciting TV. A man's face really closely as he moves things. Oh, Jason, speaking of, I've not heard from you guys today, um, but I have your pay over here. So I probably need to see you guys today. Not that I'm sure you wanted everybody to know that, but it is what it is. Go be, shoe be, don't bother me. All right. Now, your face is what I came for, the close-up. Oh, man. John, you're flattering me. All right. Now, you want me to wax philosophic? All philosophical. Okay, a new strain is when two spores come together and fuse into a new, a, a new strain, right? And that's a strain... Boy, that is not a good definition at all. Okay. <clears throat> A strain is a uh, is the usable tissue, right? The culture of a single set of genetics. Um, sometimes you can have mass amounts of different genetics, and this is where mushrooms get weird. Um, but let's say that I take a spore print here and a spore print here, and I have a spore spore, and they meet. That's a new strain. Oftentimes, though, when I'm selecting I will get satellite colonies next to each other. I put them on a dish, and now I've got like really nice rhizomorphic growth here, cottony growth here, a good linear kind of growth here, different just types of growth. And you can see it in the pattern of the mycelium. When that grows out, you can sector each one of those. And each one of those is a strain because it is a separate, they're not growing together, right? You, you want the genetics from each one of those to trial out. Um, each one of those is a new strain. But the moment that you sector that out, that's a clone. Every time you move tissue, you're cloning it. Now, spores are, are different. You get new strains from spores. Um, strain is technically a cross between two individuals in the same species. A hybrid, for example, is a cross between two individuals of two different species. So like a tiger and a lion makes a liger, right? That's, that would be a hybrid. So if you took a gold oyster, which is uh, Pleurotus citronellus, and a tree oyster, which is Pleurotus austriatus, and you somehow got them to cross, 
and they produced a mushroom, that mushroom would be a hybrid between those two species. Uh, but if I take blue oyster, which is Pleurotus austriatus variant columbinus, and I take uh, a white tree oyster, which is Pleurotus austriatus wild, right, uh, from North America, and I cross those two, that is just a single cross. That is a crossing between two of the same, two members of the same species. Um, now, like I said, cloning is when you take tissue and you plate it out. Uh, new strains come from spores. So I'm hoping, uh, because those are not strains, right? Some kind of substrain. Yeah, I mean, so basically, yeah. Now, a substrain... This is, like I said, where mushrooms get kind of weird. You have mushroom spores that found each other. Let's say five or six of them. And they all go, you know what? You're compatible, I'm compatible, I'm compatible, I'm compatible. Then they all interchange and they breed together. When that happens, um, you have kind of a communal colony. Um, it's, it's not the exact terminology for it. I'm giving you all very base because I don't even know all the exact terminology myself. But... What happens is when they grow out, it has different nuclei that it can move around inside its own body. You know, our nuclei are trapped in whatever cell they're in. Mushrooms can open up the mycelium, the walls between cells, and they can actually push multiple nuclei, which is where the genetic information is stored, all the way to the end of their hyphae, right? It's growing out. They can push multiple nuclei here. And if it's a a strain that has six parents, for example, it can put six different nuclei there. Now, as they grow out, um, shoe bees, stop it. Um, I'm very sensitive to bee stings, or like I'm allergic to everything. Um, anyways, so it's got six different nuclei here, right? Now, um, I mean, technically it would be different because they'd be paired up, and I mean, it, it, it just, anyway, let's just say, let's just say that they put three of them there, right? Now, the hyphae are producing, and it has the genetic information of three different strains growing, and it hits a new type of substrate. Now, that new type of substrate, two of them fail at, and one of them keeps growing. And these two are growing slowly, but this one is growing quickly. You can actually subculture that, which would be a substrain, a subculture of that strain, and you've isolated for the strongest genetics for that substrate. Um... The reason why you would want to do this is if you're only going to be growing on that substrate, you want the fastest growing and not the ones that are gobbling up territory that are wasting energy. And you want to get the same fruiting every single time. And mushrooms are just really weird with that. So hope that's uh, I hope that explains everything to you, Ocean Air. If, it, if I did a terrible job, please let me know and I'll try again. For liquid mycelium, I need honey plus water. You need a sugar source and water. There's uh, all kinds of recipes from the old style called hippie piss, which I think was caro and water, to new tons of different ones. People put all kinds of different stuff together, Fire Knox. So what I would just look up is uh, liquid culture recipes for mushrooms. Hello. Hi. That's my phone. Thank you. Um. Love the smell of black trumpet in the pan the best. Oh my gosh, it's so fruity smelling. I love black trumpet. Taking a walk with Drew. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it keeps jumping again. I'm always trying to survive my own personal apocalypse on a daily basis. I feel you, John. Yes, Jason, I figured you'd like that. Your face is what I came for here. Love the close-up. Again, flattery will get you everywhere. Lance! Hey, Lance, you missed the redhead, man. She was on earlier. Always learning something new. I'm able to show up. And again, the less you know, the more you can learn. That's true. But there's always more to learn. So always learn as much as you can. And then you, there, you've got even more to learn. Okay, I need more compost if there's any available. Uh, Jason, yeah, can you come today or tomorrow? If you come today and pick up your pay and get some compost, you'll beat... I've got a, three or four people coming tomorrow. So... And Jason, while you're off, man, maybe you and I can do a Q&A together sometime here. Ooh, it's a sunroom. Oh, uh, yeah, Ben and I just put the plastic up. I've got like 1, 1,500 tomato plants or something I'm going to be growing out. And so I use this as a temp greenhouse every year. Maybe you can see it there. It is a huge mess. we got the mushroom vents there. Um, my goldfish ponds. I've got some seeds already. Started, tomatoes, peppers sunflower microgreens my fish filters aren't running right now but uh yeah it's a nice little sun porch it's really warm in the afternoon 
How often do you stir your LCs? Uh, once a day for a few minutes, a few minutes each day. I mean, and if I accidentally skip a day or two, it's not really a problem. Uh, Jason. Oh, sorry. If you walk while you carry us, does that count towards my 10,000 daily steps? No, Robert, I don't think it does. Jason Chapman is yellow oyster hybrid. It is not. It is a Pleurotus citripinellus. Pi, pi, citripinellus? Pi, I can't remember how to say it. Um, but it is a species. It's a non-native species that is now around. Hey, are you joining me? Oh, my gosh. Is that my food? It is. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm not going to eat on the live stream. But I don't want to eat. I might have you guys see me stuff my face. But check that out. Ah. That is a roasted onion, a rice ball with black poplar and onion strips that are sautéed and deglazed, and then baked beans. That's a good meal. My gosh. I you guys want a close-up of my food, but uh, you got one anyways. Very random, but look up a picture of feather ice. It looks exactly like my, I, I've seen it, man. Uh, have you seen uh, the growth pattern uh, comparisons between mycelium the human neural network, the universe, uh, the galaxy spiral, and hurricanes. Like each one of those, they each grow in a very similar way. And I agree, it is absolutely, um, most of those things are wider glowing. Multi-spore inoculation equals group hippie sex, hip, or sex hippie commune. Yes, that's exactly correct. <laughs> Home to pot, nice explanation. Good, I'm glad that it, it worked. I'm glad that it was at least understandable. I feel sometimes like I just speak words out my mouth and they don't make any sense. The Birds and the Bees by Mossy Creek Mushrooms. Well said. <laughs> All right, Jason, cool. Uh, good, I'll see you here then. Have you tried any sporeless oyster strains of Sony Comments? Yes, Eric, and I hated it. Uh, Jason, oh, he actually says it down below. It did not do well. It was ugly. It was one of the ugliest oysters I've ever seen. Holy crap, the Lions main plate I did on the 22nd has covered the entire plate. Sending you that this week with the oysters for keeping. All right, Michael, Mama, send them on. I'll add them to the library. They'll go in long-term storage ASAP, and uh, anytime you ever need them, I will have them available. Do you mind if I grow them out and sell the mushrooms myself? Because I was absolutely planning on putting it to use, but I'll absolutely store it for you. I want to be cool like Jason. Which Jason? If you're talking about if it's fish, Jason, Jason is the coolest. I got that Radical Mycology book on your recommendation. Great book. Helped me appreciate just how weird and wonderful mushrooms are. Yeah, they are crazy weird. And people are crazy weird, too. We go hand in hand. 1,500 tomato plants. Wow, I'm about to be growing around 1,500 or so opium poppy plants. Uh, okay, okay, really? Who didn't see that coming with me? I mean, come on, Lil. <laughs> Jeffrey. Yeah. So, actually, I saw someone in the Mossback Network mention something about getting poppy plants. Or maybe it was in the mushroom growing book, but uh, mushroom growing group. But somebody was talking about, about doing that as a uh, prepper plan kind of thing with all this stuff going on in the world. It's not a bad idea. I mean, that would be a way to make more morphine. I don't think the system's going to collapse or anything, so I'm not that worried about it. But, uh, I mean, I also have some insurance in case things do. That's what routine uh, I'm on with the LC stirring. Just sometimes thought it might be too much. No, Michael Mama, sometimes I'll leave them all night, like, vigorously stirring, like, air bubbles going crazy. I want that mycelium shredded. I have noticed, like, people always comment about how thick my liquid culture is, and I really think it's how much, like, stirring I do. Vigorous stirring. I have four liquid culture plates, and uh, I think I have 40 strains in liquid culture right now with more coming, so, um, yeah. And then some of them have, I've got jars with backups on backups, so, yeah, it's crazy. Some what mushrooms? Uh, some what mushroom can grow good in East Texas seven B zone? So I don't know based on the zone. Um, let's see. East Texas. I mean, you guys are probably pretty hot, right? If I'm remembering correctly, that's pretty pretty uh, high desert. Um, it's not until you get to Central. Last time I was in Texas, I think it was Central that I got into the mountains and where it got cooler. Um, so if you're hot and in the desert, you're going to probably want to focus on, well, I don't know, you get cold too. Um, boy, I don't, so tell me more about it, Chris. That's what I need to know. Is it hot or is it cold? Do 
Do you have hot and cold? What's going on? Michael, mama, eat your food. Don't mind us. Uh, I mean, I would, but it, you might not mind. Other people might mind. I, I don't know. I don't really, I've, I don't, I like eating. I don't mind eating in front of people here, but like when it's like a business kind of thing, I just feel like you guys don't want to see me eat that. Right. I did an effing awesome job breaking that down. You rock. Keep up. Ah, thanks, man. I, I'm glad to help. Hi guys. How do you like the fantastic fungi movie? I still haven't watched it. I have the link to it. Now they finally sent me the link. Um, though, well, that's fair. I really shouldn't complain. My Kickstarter failed. I think I failed about half my rewards back when I did my Kickstarter five years ago. So I really shouldn't mind if they failed to me. Um, but I finally got it. I haven't watched it yet. I'm looking forward to it. I'm always afraid with someone like Paul Stamets because I love Paul Stamets. Man, I love Paul Stamets to death. I just wish he'd back off the woo a little. Just a little. <laughs> or the self, you know, aggrandizing. I don't know. Love me some Paul Stamets, though. I mean, that's how I got into this. I'll, wa I'll try to watch it tonight. On the note of the feather eye spirals appearing from the universe, the brain, et cetera, and the cubensis mushrooms, I've submitted my belief in higher power. Um, yeah, so my mom asks me a lot, like, what I believe in. She, my group in a very Christian household, very conservative household. Um, obviously, I wear the hammer now. I, I don't really believe in any personalization of any kind of God or anything like that, but I definitely... Uh, I've had too many things just work out in my... I don't know. I've had too many experiences that make me question some things and I don't know what it is. I'm open, leaving it open to interpretation. But, uh, I tell my mom that I recognize there's a pattern. I have no idea what that pattern is. Um, I don't think it's an old man with a beard, but, um, I am open to it. So heck no, please do. I want to see her take off. Oh, is that uh, growing the mushrooms and selling? Okay, cool. I worded my commented terribly, but hopefully you understand. I completely understand, man. I get it. I get it for sure. Sorry, warm weather strains. Okay, Chris, you want warm weather strains. Yeah. So if, if you're talking from me, um, you think you can get it from from Lenny as well. You've got the King Blue Oyster. Um, that's a really good one. Um, it's not hot weather. It's warm weather. If uh, It's also got one of the widest growing ranges I've seen in an oyster. Um, pink oysters are good. Look into growing milky mushrooms. I'm looking into trying that this summer. Apparently, they're as easy to grow as oysters, and, and people do it a lot in India. So this year, I am planning on having a room or two in the warehouse that is not cooled um, at all, and I'm going to allow hot air to just flow through it, and I'm going to try to grow uh, milky mushrooms and some patty straw and some other mushrooms that I can offer my chefs that are weird. So, Yeah. That, that's the kind of stuff I would look into. Uh, patty straw, milky mushrooms for hot weather. Um, pink oysters. Gold oysters tolerate warm weather. Uh, the Venetian or Italian oyster, that's also a warm weather strain. But anytime you're dealing with mushrooms, you're typically not going to have stuff that works really well in really high heat. You will need to condition somewhat. Whether, now, you might be able to get away with swamp coolers. That's what I would love to see is more swamp coolers and mushroom growing. Wild lettuce is not hot habit forming like morphine. Go natural. Won't argue with you at all. <laughs> yeah, mine is getting hella thick, and I was getting worried. Now, Michael Mama, I like it. The only problem is that sometimes it stops up the syringe when I'm trying to fill it out of the jar. So you just have to push it back in, pull it back out. People are like people are liking that thick LC when I send it out. Apparently, it's growing in really fast for people, and it grows in fast for me. Eat your weeds. Eat your food while it, while it's hot. I'm, I might do that. It's smelling really good. I'm My stomach's over here, warble, warble, warble. Hey, y'all. Thinking the medicinal side of mycology will take off after we get through this. Michael Lee, I'm already seeing it, man. Um, I don't. I haven't looked to see if uh, I've sold any on the website. since I, I mean, I haven't even announced it. Um, oh. But my buddy up at... Uh, a big farm up north just messaged me, and he's got some plates ready for me. Some uh, Chinese shiitake strings and the like. That's going to be cool. The big, thick sh uh, Chinese shiitake mushrooms. But yeah, Michael Lee, I think that uh, I offer, I've got my medicinal bulk pack that just went live on the website today. And I've had so many requests for reishi, so many orders for reishi. 
Um, so I decided to do kind of a, just a medicinal LC pack. It's got shiitake and oyster for like heart health. Um, cause there are studies showing like cholesterol levels, blood pressure and things like that. Wood ear for blood pressure. Um, there was this whole town and they did a study on them because they, they, this whole town had like a lack of high blood pressure and they were like, what's up with that? You know? And when they looked into it, it was the center for where wood ear mushrooms are grown in like China. And apparently like a wood ear acts as a blood thinner. So it's, it's not really a, a blood pressure thing so much as it is kind of like a, an aspirin, like a baby aspirin kind of thing. Um, but I, I eat wood ear every chance I can, and I really like it. I eat oysters and shiitake when I can. Shiitake, especially, I love shiitake. Uh, black poplar, though that's not on my medicinal pack. That is also supposed to be a good one for, like, heart health and that kind of thing. Um, I then have cordyceps militaris agaricon chaga the boston edison reishi which is my favorite strain of reishi to grow and and uh, uh turkey tail i have turkey tail in there as well uh there's nine different medicinal strains in that and it's the same as the other bulk pack and price and uh, it's got some really good stuff growing in it so so i agree with you i think the medicinal side is going to take off big time and i'm honestly like i'm it's weird. I've started taking mushroom supplements regularly and I'm not having the flare ups I was having um, with my arthritis. I'm not having, I'm not getting sick. Everybody around me is like, not, not like here at Mossy Creek, but like, you know, everybody seems like they're getting sick, like the flu and stuff. Things are, things are getting easier now, but since I started on the mushroom supplements and weight lifting and eating a lot better, like getting away from breads, man, I'm doing a lot better. So, I mean, I did have, like a good six months where I was dealing with like double ear infections and some inflammation issues and all that stuff. But psh, oh my gosh, that stuff hurt, but I'm through it now. And it went away after I started uh, making my, my reishi coffee again. And reishi is supposed to be good for inflammation. So I wondered if that halfway helped me drain a lot of that fluid. It's really nice, but there is some magic to it, of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't be Paul Stamets. Yeah, I love science. And there's enough left to interpretation in mushrooms that it's really cool and you can add a lot of like sacredness to them. Um, but I recognize that I have my own sacred, sacred BS and you have your own sacred, sacred BS. And it is unlikely that the twain shall meet or the two shall meet in twain. I don't know, but you know, is it as it is. Paul Stamets is what he is. And I thank him very much for what he's done to the community by introducing so many people to the world of growing mushrooms. Thank you for the live streams. They are a nice break. Have you tried growing cordyceps? Yes. Yet. Uh, indigo, I, I've i got the liquid culture going of it, and I have the recipes going. This is a fruiting strain that I got um, from a buddy of mine, and uh, it is absolutely already turning orange on the plates and everything else and starting to pin some. Um, when it comes to cordyceps, my understanding is your, your substrate is important, but the genetics are the most important thing, so... Pink oyster is the worst tasting mushroom. I disagree. I think the chestnut mushroom is the worst tasting mushroom, but again, that's subjective. Pink oysters are really good if you get a right the right strain and you pick them early enough. If you don't pick them early, they they get fishy. So I'm going to designate my building to just reishi but keep my spare bedroom just for the specialty mushrooms. That's interesting. So I know a couple guys that grow reishi and their business plan is to, um, they don't even have a fruiting room. I mean, they have a fruiting room, but it's like they, they grow the reishi in antler form inside the bag with no humidification, just fresh air exchange and air treatment. And then they go through and, Oh, what is it? Uh, they grow out of, I can't remember how much they grow out um, every year, but he grows it out like in his garage. He then, hey, baby, you're going to join me? Little um, Woohoo! Got the children fed. So, anyways, he, I, I'm, I'm having to squint and lean in to read the questions. It's hot in here. It is warm, but it's okay. It's nice out here, and I'm getting good signal, which was the most important thing. I was losing signal everywhere I went, even inside. So anyways, um, they grow reishi out in antlers form in the bags, which is what we do now. And guy's growing it in his garage. He 
grows it, takes it, dries it, and then sells it for $94 a pound dried. And he sells it throughout the year. And I think he grows it just once or twice, like once in the spring, once in the fall, and then dries a massive amount of it. So she's all squinty eyed. I am. I'm sorry. Um, it's really reflective. Hot and humid like North Louisiana. We stay hotter. Oh, so you're humid. So you're probably not going to use uh, swamp coolers. Mild winters are more wide. So you kind of sound like you're like us, mild winters with uh, high temperature spikes. Okay. So, yeah, man, you can probably get away with a lot of stuff like I do, too. Yeah, we have humidity spikes. Our, our summer gets really dry, uh, but our winter, spring, and fall are really wet. And then, we, of course, we have, yeah, we get wet periods throughout all the summer until the very high summer. And then it gets real dry and crunchy like she's talking about. It's really difficult to in the spring, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I get a little bit of soy sauce? Yeah. Thank you. Yep. I thought it was forbidden to grow chaga since it's parasitic. Uh, not my understanding. Um, my understanding is that you can't be growing it out in the wild. All right, guys, I'm breaking down. And you're just going to have to deal. I will see your yummy plate of goodness you have. And raise you a plate of Popeye's chicken and a nice and sweetened coffee. Got good, yummy goodness too. Heck yeah, man. That sounds great. Uh, just the... Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh my it's low sodium. I need to have extra. What's the fruiting temps for reishi, and do they require the same light cycles? Uh, if you want good color, you need to have good light cycles. Uh, 12 on, 12 off, in my experience, it does really well. Um, fruiting temps, from what I have seen, 65 is about ideal, but uh, I've had it up to 75, and it's it's been growing just fine in the bag. Why are you trying to be like North Louisiana? I know we bad. We bad hee hee. It's 90 for the high and 250% humidity for the last two days here. Oh my gosh. 90 degrees already? Miserable. Yeah. No, thank you. Okay. I want to move up north even further. I want like 12 <laughs> feet of snow. This lady won't let me do it. She doesn't like the cold. I do, I don't. I don't know. Uh, Michael Mama doing? says, hey there, beautiful lady. Hi, Michael Mama. <laughs> hey, man. Glad I could make it. Yeah. Welcome, Pluto. Following up, my 12-pound blue oyster bags with alfalfa and hardwood blend are way too wet. I had two bags with less water that seem healthy and white. Brown pools. Um, then you might back off to a 50% hydration rate and see if that works for you. Uh, I don't know. I've not had many people talk about that. Um, somebody said, oh, my God, I'll trade houses with you. Oh, yeah, where are you at? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah, Pluto. The only thing I can think of, man, is that you need to. Sorry, you it's just that. it's just a wood bore. It's not going to sting you. It doesn't even have a stinger. Or if they do, they've never used them on me. When I even when I pick them up. You guys thought I was funny out here, like being chased around by the bee a little bit and shooing it away. To be fair, I have like PTSD. <laughs> past. I got into my grandfather's beehives once, so she thought the white box was a present. And, I was really little and, and opened yes, up them. and opened her grandfather's beehive thinking she was getting a present and she got a million bees in the face. Are you putting in floor drain at the new warehouse building? No, Indigo, I'm not. No, we don't have much humidity, much wetness in the floor, so vacuuming it up is pretty dang fast. It's raining pollen. <laughs> Snowing in Colorado right now. Man, I miss Colorado. We were supposed to go back this spring um, to a buddy of my places up in Vail. And uh, unfortunately, that has, has gone down with all the flights and stuff going down. Oh, my God. I'll trade houses with you. Oh, yeah. We were at that one. I love you both. I got to get going. But it's always the highlight of my day when I catch you live stream, your live stream. Hope you have a great day. You too, John. I hope you were here for the goodbye. But goodbye, man. Have a good day. Bye, Have a good day. One. Need to try Hawaii. Show you show you sauce is really good. I think better than soy sauce. Okay, Ho Hawaii show you sauce. I'll try that. Mm. I'm always down for new foods. I like fish sauce too, but typically I like to cook with fish.
sauce more than I like to uh, mm -hmm. like use it as a condiment. Ninety three degrees Fahrenheit, six percent humidity here. Oh my gosh, ninety three already in March. It is eighty here today. My son said, "Yes, you are beautiful. Watch out, Drew. Bring it." I'm probably bigger than him. Playing plants versus zombies with him. <laughs> that sounds fun. That's a good game. <laughs> it is I a like good game. It. I love that game. Yeah. And she, yes, she is beautiful. I agree. Who is? You. Me? Yes. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Who else would I be talking about? <laughs> I guess Laura was on here earlier, and she's beautiful, too. But That's true. Uh, there was a somebody on here was getting a little uh, mm -hmm. little creepy with it. Don't do that. <laughs> That's weird. Anthony said, "Upstate New York, <laughs> my ass off, not where you want to be." Ooh, no, no, I don't want to be in New York right now. Keep away, keep away. Mm -hmm. Brown guys. pools. He might be seeing metabolites in the bag. Yeah, I don't. If it's brown or yellow, I mean, like, mm -hmm. if it's brown, that might be bad. If it's yellow, it's probably okay. No, we're not really seeing much effects down here. Jeffrey said, they is, yeah, they say New York's yeah. pretty bad. Hey, man, you were in North Louisiana. Huh? I'm in Monero, South Louisiana. Who was in? Uh, who was it that was in North Louisiana? Mm, I can't remember. Um, I'm in Mon Monero, South Louisiana. We got Satan's bowl for heat and humidity here. Well, if I want to get oysters <laughs> to grow on banana waste, would I add dry banana to my petris? Uh, I mean, the waste maybe, but not the not the banana itself. I don't think. Dune, where where are you? We have so much water and ground from rain. It's just humid. More rain tonight. Yeah, we we've had a lot of rain here recently ourselves. I think a lot, a lot of people have across the country. Jeff says hi, Sam. Hi. Hey yo, hey Yagdrasil, welcome. What's interesting? What? Interesting mushroom dishes have you tried in a restaurant lately? Well, in a restaurant, nothing. Um, not, in it, yeah. not in it, but we got, uh, I got a mushroom rice bowl from one of my restaurants yesterday uh, called Kaizen in Knoxville. It was curbside pickup. It was, it was curbside pickup. And I had a mushroom rice bowl that was just absolutely dish, delicious. And Samantha got, um, had mushroom, our mushrooms in it too. Chicken yakasoba, I think is what it was called. And that. It tasted very Kind of gingery. Very gingery. And noodles and um, something that I really like is whenever we cook our vegetables, I like them to still be kind of crunchy and colorful. <laughs> and, the does not. and it was, there were peppers and vegetables in there that still had sort of a crunch to them. And I really enjoyed that. They were really good. Now, I like my vegetables mushy, all the way cooked. Halfway disintegrated already. <laughs> Can't buy my water. water. No, nah, I'll just drink this. Hello from Romania. Well, hello, Romania. We're from East Tennessee. Thank you for all the knowledge. I tried the needle biopsy. Seems to be working with no laminar flow hood. Awesome. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people who are doing it without a laminar flow hood, and they're having really good results. So that's good. Thanks, cough, cough. <laughs> You're, well, yeah, Anthony. Well... You just stay up there with your cough, cough. Aww. Sorry, bud. But you're on your own today. Ron says, Ron says, fish sauce, tamari, and rice vinegar are standard mushroom production sauce. Oh, that's a pretty amazing. That sounds good. There too, though. Like that's, that's a pretty tight packed city, but you have a lot of talent up there, I'm sure. <clears throat> so that'll help. Oh, did he say New York City? I thought he said like upstate New York. Oh. Sorry. Upstate New York's where all the rednecks live, story. isn't it? Smacking for you. How safe are the metabolites that get produced in the bags? Are they in any concern? I'm in Florida. No, dude, I've not had any problems with them. If you're getting a lot of them, you probably have a bacterial infection in your bag. But Florida is as dry as a bone right now? or Because normally I've always heard that it's really like wet down there with all the canals and the being on the coast everywhere. Got some nice turkey tails growing in. Heck yeah, Yagdrasil. That's uh, our medicinal bulk pack that just went live on the website today. Has a turkey tail strain, a reishi strain. I was watching it for you. 
a reishi strain, a garicon chaga, and all that stuff. But yeah, turkey tail, I love it. You, there's pictures of the turkey tail growing in my uh, my garden. I'm looking at all the pollen buds that. Uh, yeah, yeah, the maple trees dropping. The, the maple tree is dropping. If we use air conditioning, we could grow oysters in our greenhouse with a humidifier. I mean, yeah, if you can get the temperature cool enough, for sure. Um, anything over 75 degrees Fahrenheit, I have found, tends to blotch out a lot easier. Less work for your stomach when they are mushy. I agree. Like, who wants to eat food that you're not getting the, the nutrition out of? Aside from dual spore petri dish inoculation, does double isolates work the same way? No, no, not typically because not unless they're um, mono, uh, mono uh, karyotic. If you have uh, two strains that are derived from a single spore, you can. Uh, Gary from Fresh from the Farm Fungi has been doing this. Go to his Instagram, Fresh from the Farm Fungi. Uh, he's doing it this way, where he's doing cereal dilution until he gets a single spore growing in each dish. And puts the takes a sector out of each one, and then puts them in a dish together, lets them grow, and then they fuse, and then that becomes the 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 new strain. So that is a, that can be a viable cross. But if you just put a one strain in and one another strain in, and they meet, they'll usually just form a division line between them, and they will not grow together. But Gary's the guy I suggest going to if you want to if you want to look into the monokaryotic uh, uh, breeding like that. What are you using for wood-based sub recipes, specifically shiitake or reishi? Uh, 60 percent um, for the reishi, I use the master's mix. That's 50 percent hardwood fuel pellets, 50 percent soybean hull pellets. Um, for shiitake, I use uh, 60 percent hardwood fuel pellets, 40 percent wheat bran, and hydrate to a 60 percent hydration. The maitake experiment, I just put them in the bags. So we're going to wait. Well, it'll be two weeks before we know, you know, much about how the bags are growing in. Or at least a week, I mean. It's all good. We are so far removed from society. and We call them hoop jacks around here. Hoop. Wait, who's hoop jacks? Who's hoop jacks? Or, in, or is, is that instead of rednecks? It's humid, but no rain for a long time. You guys don't have rednecks in New York? You have hoop jacks? Interesting. Is that kind of like how your cornbread's sweet and ours is good? I mean, white. I mean, gosh, it just gets worse. Not sweet. Crumbly. Good grief. It's humid, but no rain for a long time. Well, I mean, you know what it is. Their cornbread is yellow and sweet up north. Every every time I've been up north, it's always like yellow and sweet. Like your family it's like, fixes. It's like a cake. Yankee cornbread. Yankee it's like cornbread, a sweet, yeah. Fluffy kind of <laughs> cornbread. Venture! Down here, it's hard as a rock, almost. Like. Oh, that wasn't our dog. Milly kind of crunchy on the edges and um, it's not sweet at all. You guys have hoe cakes up north? You guys eat mm -hmm. hoe cakes? I bet you call um, something like silly honey cakes or something. It's humid, but no rain for a long time. Oh, Nancy, I hate to hear that. Hopefully you guys will get some good rain in for your gardens. Okay, good conversation yet. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Thank you, Andrew and Samantha. I must go sleep now. See ya. Take care, Farnox. Hope you had a good night. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams, buddy. <laughs> Talking about beautiful Lance, uh, brother, Laura is the kind of girl you would climb to the top of Everest in the middle of winter just to get her a cup of ice or jump into a lit volcano to pick her flowers. Oh my gracious. I mean, she is pretty <laughs> gorgeous. I, I don't like, I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble, but Samantha has admitted to me. She I thinks that Laura is very beautiful. I agree. So she yeah. is. And not only that, she's like one of the best people I know. I wish so. you were here to see this and read it. Mm -hmm. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to point her like what, does it have a time? Here. I'll have to... I'm going to copy and paste that. <laughs> I, you ask him permission. No, that to her? he put it on a public forum. What? <laughs> he did it on a public forum. He doesn't like it. He shouldn't have put it on a public forum. No, no. I'm copying and pasting that, Robert. I'm caught doing that and sending that to Laura. <laughs> right now, I'm going to Facebook. I can't even see what you guys are saying. You can't stop me now. Oh, man. Wow. 
Yeah, I'm I'm, to win. No, I'm strong. I didn't know I was that strong. That made the dogs jump. <laughs> What's the matter? You okay? <laughs> Man, my chat's taking a long time to load, though. So. Well, while well, it's loading. Humidity. There you go. He's all curly. He is all curly. His hair went all curly with the humidity. <laughs> Gary is awesome. Yeah, dude, I agree. Gary, Gary's the man uh, on a lot of things. He, he's, I, I love the dude. I want to talk to him, like, get him up, see if we can do a, a back and forth on here sometime, like a live stream. I don't know how to combine two people on a live stream, though. We'll have to figure it out. Well, she just wants to talk all over me all the time. Let's talk to him, not you. Robert says I'm from North Louisiana, not a full, not a full creep, only a little. <laughs> I'm engaged to Jennifer Lawrence. She don't know it yet, but those are those details are minor details. <laughs> oh, my oh gosh! Oh my gosh! Everything's slowed down since I've tried to go to Facebook to copy and paste. You guys are killing my computer all of a sudden. Yeah, we... Our weather here has been, like, perfect for morel hunting. It's been wet, but not too wet. Past years, we've had it be way too wet or way too dry at the exact wrong time. I know I said I wasn't going to eat in front of you guys, but screw it. Oh, did she leave Facebook? She did. She did. I will have to get her on Instagram. Well, screw it. I've got it copied. You got off easy. <laughs> um, I also came across a video suggesting a, to do a two-stage spore print. What's a two-stage spore print, Michael Lee? We are making reindeer mushroom soup. Mixed mushroom saute with onions, a lot of port wine, reindeer stock, heavy cream. I think I'm going to get some mushrooms tomorrow. Oh, my gosh, man. Awesome. Can you come cook for me? <laughs> Wait, you're in Iceland. Can I come with visit you? <laughs> That sounds delicious. I love deer. I don't think I've, I've never had reindeer. We've had bear. But I've had bear and I've had deer and uh, we have white-tailed deer here. And I love white-tailed deer. Yes, yellow and sweet, but our tea is not. No, our tea is sweet. Because tea is supposed to be sweet and cornbread is supposed to be savory. I'm supposed with you, man. You guys eat... I don't know. I think it's weird how you guys are flipped opposite of us, but just... It is kind of. Right? I lived in New Hampshire for a while and yeah... It's interesting. That is right. I forgot you lived up north. Yankee. That's all right. The East uh, East Tennessee was uh, Union anyways. So we were basically, we were the Yankees of the South. Or is it Anison? Either way, it's the hot one. <laughs> Fair enough. Yes. On Reishi, do you grow go from LC to Petri to Grain Spawn? No, I just go from LC to Grain to Sub. Eric, what's going on? Turtle Creek Mushrooms here. What? Oh, no. The chat. Drunk. Jumped. Drunk. It drunk. Guys, I'm falling apart today. <laughs> uh, what is this revolutionary new filter patch that TR claims to come up with and talks about in a recent video? I don't know. I've not watched it, man. I don't think that there was really a need for a revolutionary new filter patch anyways, but... I'll watch this video and I'll get. We'll do it with an open mind. Well, if it's better and it works, then yeah. Then it. I know it's hard to cut. What's hard to cut? Oh, the reishi. Yeah, I, I prefer doing uh, liquid culture for that for sure. Billy just said, "Oh my God, rolling over here, silly nanny cakes, nanny cakes. They're nanny cakes. No, no, they're not nanny cakes. How did my comment get missed? T Walker, where are you at?" I'm scrolling way, way up, man, and I'm not seeing you anywhere. Did it get held for review? Did Jason delete it? So, T. Walker, I'm not seeing... Oh.
yeah, man, I'm not seeing anything from you other than that comment. How did my comment get missed? I must say, I really enjoy the smell of the Pathfinder spawn. Yes. Okay. I didn't know you had the Pathfinder. Uh, of course, you're no one, so I don't know who you are. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking about growing it on some grain and then brewing beer, like all grain beer with the Pathfinder grown through it because of how it smells. I can only imagine the taste. Like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. You let the spores from the outer edge of the cap fall first, then switch foil and let the spores fall from the inner part. Theory is most contaminants will fall out first. Uh, okay, I didn't know the, the whenever I do spore prints, oftentimes it's uh it's across the whole thing. I don't see um ones from the outer edge of the cap and then goes for oh, unless you mean the first set. So you're saying like do a spore print and then finish a spore print, like do basically do a half spore print. And that way you have less contaminations with it. I mean, that's possible, but if there's bacteria on there and they're reproducing, then they're probably spreading. So it may or may not be a good way to go. Eric, that is the patch he developed that has him in over his head in contamination. Haha, <laughs> poor guy. Yeah, he's, he's dealt with contamination a lot. Um, he's also pretty big. He's a big guy. So, I mean, like not big guy himself. He's actually a small guy, um, but fighting fit. But he is... Um, big and like his his operation yeah, is so large right about with the larger space if it's, if we're gonna see a big jump if we're gonna do better or i think we'll, we'll do better i've seen a couple things in tr's op um for one thing he's got a positive pressure grow room at least last time i was there and i think that that spills a lot of contamination back into his grow room where we do negative pressure grow or his, his incubation room and where we do positive or negative pressure uh, in our grow rooms and positive pressure in our incubation, I think that protects us a lot because we filter the air that goes into the incubation room. Also, most contamination that I've seen doesn't come through the filter patch. Most of it's for improper cooks. Bandwidth is slower because everyone's online during this. Oh, yeah, Michael Lee, for sure. Jeffrey says, "Ha, huh, okay then. Then I am engaged to the chick from the from the from Sucker Punch. What is Sucker Punch? She don't know yet, and all the court documents saying I gotta stay a hundred yards away or just set back. She loves me just watch a little. Oh, you creepers! Do you grow shiitake, uh, Lucas? I used to, and I am again, but it'll be a couple months before I have fruit to show you. Um, but I definitely uh, grow it, have grown it, love it, uh, and I have." The, the liquid culture for 3782, which is my old favorite strain in my medicinal bulk pack. And then I'm testing out uh, three or four different commercial strains um, that uh, I'll be showing you guys when they're ready. But I'll be doing the 3782 next to it. So we'll do a side by side comparison for everything. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, ours are coming up now. Apparently they're popping. God brought me four of them today. I love them. Robert Charles says, sweet tea and cornbread with homemade cracklings on the bottom make you chase cars. <laughs> oh, the neighbor's dog, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, I like cracklings and and uh, cornbread, though I don't like sweet tea very much. I don't like tea at all much. I'll get a... I, I know you do. I, ugh, ugh. Get your whole gallon of sweet it makes tea. me feel weird. Like I don't know if it's the caffeine in it or what, but I'll get a peachy tea from Pals occasionally, but it's like a peach-flavored sweet tea. Um... But even then, I don't like it that much. I tend to uh, like coffee for my uh, caffeine. And then uh, my favorite way with cornbread is cornbread and milk. Just a glass of milk and throw some cornbread crumbs in it and eat it. Mm. Though I try to stay away from breads right now. Am I not part of this chat? Everything I post gets skipped. Well, T. Walker, I've only seen two things from you now. So you're definitely part of this chat. But for some reason, some of it wasn't. Moose and reindeer are both great unless they're running. Okay, I've not had them, uh, but let's 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 stay away from them while they're running. Then I'll send Samantha the recipe or Ben. Either one's fine. Uh, Samantha's more likely to cook it than Ben. Ben doesn't cook. Ben makes bread. Ben bread. <laughs> yep, he rarely rarely cooks. When he does cook, he's an amazing cook, but he doesn't like cooking. I, I it's cook. Samantha and I cook more than anybody uh, in the house. Our son cooks. All, all three of our children cook. That's true. Our, our children all cook, too. 
I'll gladly trade black trumpets for some fresh morels. We're a couple months away from our season. Heck yeah, man. That sounds good. I don't have any morels though. Other than the four I got. If I was not tied to my farm, I would already be packing and moving to Mossy Creek. Is that right? Don't show up on an now. There's lots of burrs here. A lot of good burrs. Luck. Samantha's pulling them out of venture. And the women are all like thistles. There's Beautiful spiky little seeds. and dangerous. Hurt. And ornery. I know I'm going to change the name. Yeah, I ordered the Pathfinder with Golden Oyster. Oh, nice. Okay. I mean, I'll, I, I don't remember that one, but uh, uh, I get so many cultures nowadays, it's hard for me to remember it by the, cold, by the order. Did I say cultures? I get so many orders now. Ugh, brain tired. Where you at in upstate New York, T. Walker asks. Yeah, I'm closing in on the Pathfinder about a week away from initiating my blogs. Heck yeah, Michael Lee. I think you'll like it. It's a really nice oyster. Yeah, he would venture would not make it. Oh, you called them nanny cakes or something. Had us dying. Johnny cakes. Johnny, I've always I've always heard him called Johnny cakes. Had us dying. Anyhow, north, south. That was so long ago. We're all just trying to make it. I agree. I, there are people around here that still get into it, and they're all like, yeah, the, the Confederacy. And I'm just like, the South will rise again, they say. And I'm like, why? Why? I I mean, for one thing, you live in this area, and you're Scots-Irish descent. You probably, your family probably, you're probably a son of the Union. I am a son of the Union and a son of the Confederacy because my father's line fought for the Confederacy, but they were from South Carolina. So... And then Cumberland Mountain Range. Do morels mer grow here in Atlanta or in uh, L.A., uh, Louisiana? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I've never been. It's one of the few states I've, I've not been to. I've been to like forty-seven states, and Louisiana is one of the ones I have not been to. I've only been to Florida for medical reasons and a helicopter. So I don't really count that one. So that'd make me at 46. And then I haven't been to Alaska or Hawaii. Oh, and I haven't been to Maine. So I guess I've been, I haven't been to like four or five. But the, all the others I've been to. Our comb tooth has a habit of growing through the filter patch after the second or third flush. Yeah, that'll happen. If they Any of the heristiums, man, they grow like crazy. Hey, it's Jason and Robin. Uh, I've kind of got my truck in his way. That's all right. Do you try liquid culture direct to fruiting block? I have tried it, Lucas, and with really poor success or pretty, pretty poor results. Same here in PA, finding black morels still semi seasonal here. Nice. I like the black morels a lot. We get a lot of blondes around here. I don't see a lot of the black morels. You don't know Sucker Punch? Blasphemy. Lol, the movie Sucker Punch. Emily Browning, girl from that Lemony Snicket movie. She grew up. Lol, yes, I know. I'm a creeper. Well, I mean, I don't know how old you are, so for all I know, you're 18, and she's 18. I don't know. I've only seen two comments from T as well. Yeah, I've only seen the, t the two. Just on the serious side, I'm just fooling around. I don't want to scare her or anything. There are some freaks out there. Nah, I've, I, we, we know you guys are fooling around. At least we hope you're fooling around. Don't show up to my house unannounced, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's a standing rule for everyone. Yeah. I've had people do it and they get met with a 12 gauge. So 80 hardwood pallet, 20 wheat brand for shiitake. Oh, pellet. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, uh, I don't do that. I do a 40% wheat brand and 60% hardwood fuel pellets. <laughs> Go get them. Go get them. The other way. Other way. They're in the back. There you go. We just got our first blocks ready to harvest, ready to fruit yesterday. Blue oyster, black king, lion's mane, chestnut, and shiitake. We're taking a gamble right now, but I think it's going to work out in the end. Anthony, I, honestly, man, I'm starting to get really good results. The first week was the hardest and then after that stuff is starting to ease up to the point that I'm actually thinking that uh, in a week or two I'm going to have everybody back to working like normal and what will have really changed is where we're selling mushrooms will have changed but they, love Jason. they do love Jason <laughs> those dogs I can hear them whining I don't know if they can hear them whining but the dogs they truffle loves her Jason 
Dude, apparently it's every time I type a color of a neck because then the next comment was skipped. That's crazy. Dang, T. I wonder why. What's up with that? What's up, Wayne? You're coming on just in time for me to get off, man. Jason showed up, and I'm about to go uh, uh, work with the uh, see what he's doing. Yes. Let's see. Yes, you're Aren't thistles a Scottish thing like crest and flags? Yes, Lance. That's why I chose thistles. Um, yeah, the the thistles are the Scottish national flower. Beautiful flowers. And they'll stick you. They grow in my yard. They grow in my yard, too. Did you know they're not native? No, I didn't. Yeah, dandelions aren't either. It's Jason. If it's fish. What's up, everybody? Let's see. And plans to start medicinal soon. You, you guys are really an inspiration. Yet. Do what? You didn't eat your onion yet. I've eaten part of my onion. <laughs> What's up, Robin? Like, she's not, yeah, she's not coming anywhere near. She... <laughs> <laughs> Compost and pay. Hey. Let's see. Well, hey, Anthony, I appreciate that you, uh, that you think we're an inspiration, man. I, I'm happy to provide that. Um, uh, I hope that I'm more informational than inspirational, but thank you very much for that. And honestly, man, yeah, start out, see, get that medicinal pack, man. Try out with the medicinals. See what works for you guys. I think this is going to diversify the mushroom world. Um, I'm actually working on a post for on the mycological warfare series that Ben's been writing. That is uh, um, mycological warfare. Ben's got part one and part two. He's working on part three right now. And I'm doing an addendum called mycological warfare nuts. And it's based off the 101st airborne. Um, being surrounded in the Battle of the Bulge at, uh, where was it? Uh, Cherbourg? No. Bastogne. Yeah, I think it was Bastogne. Anyways, they were surrounded, and the Germans wrote them. They were like, hey, guys, we've got you surrounded. You're going to die. And the American commander wrote to the German commander uh, nuts from the American commander and then ended up holding out to the last bullet um, on that. And I think they became a badass fighting force from that point on. Like nobody doubted them at that point. I think it's going to be the same way here. There are badasses being formed now. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be crazy good for the actual mushroom world. So the previous post that you see all had that nomenclature about people color of next here in New York that got skipped super weird. So that may be YouTube pulling your comment because I can see if our filters pull it, but I can't see it if YouTube's filter pulls it. Um, and so I'm not sure why, man. Maybe they don't like the word redneck or something like that, which I think is so dumb, but whatever. I'm sorry that your comments are missing. Something else for shiitake. Uh, what, Lucas? What's something else for shiitake? Michael Lee, well, our morels come in waves, black morels, gray, then yellow, then we wait for the horn of plenty, shanties, and then bullets. That's about right for us. Except I don't see... Uh, um, blacks very often. Like we get a lot of blondes in the earliest part of the season, but then as it goes later and later, we don't see as many. Hey, thank you, whoever just ordered the medicinal bulk pack. I just got a notification. Thank you very much for that. Um, Andrew, just got your LC going in the grow room before fruiting. Thanks, great LC. Hey, Rich, you're very welcome, man. Thank you for purchasing it. Hope you, it does really well for you. Hope you grow a million pounds off of it, man. Just got done with the weekly chore of 4.6 acres of mowing. Dang, Wayne, you're not that far from me. I'm going to have to come visit you and go see 4.6 acres of mowing. It's all good. I'm glad you guys are doing well. Thanks, man. I hope you are doing too. I hope you're doing well too, T. I'll watch it over. Well, I, yeah, Wayne. Sorry about that, man. I know. I know you try to get on here when you can. Oh, honestly, we haven't had any problems with trolls today. Dune says, in general, without easy access to soybean holes, do you suggest wheat bran or alfalfa? Does, I do the alfalfa um, is what I suggest just because it's easier than dealing with uh, the flakes, the the uh, bran flakes. Robert says, that does make loads of common sense with sending you clean air all the way through. I knew that, but never put it together until you just said that. Oh, my God, cornbread and milk. I know cornbread milk is so amazing. And there must be a delay to this chat, like a serious delay. Bring the clan to Maui. I'll put you all up. Let you drive an old Dodge 4x4. Lance, that... Maybe when all the flight stuff starts back up, I might take you up on that, man. I I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. T 
Walker, south of Syracuse a little bit. Are you in New York? Just uh, just check. Well, yeah, man, up by Plattsburgh. Going to try to hit this area up commercially when this is over. Yeah, man, um, I'm packing a lot of slow-growing species, but I'm, I'm going to start back up on my oysters probably next week. Uh, we're moving the bagger this weekend, the boiler. I've already got the trough for the steamer over there. Uh, Ben's already started working on some experimental equipment at the warehouse, um, though that's all been stalled with all the bagger orders you guys have got coming in. Holy crap, you guys have put in some bagger orders. Um, so thank you for the bagger orders. That's that's awesome. Uh, that's getting been like I don't really get anything much out of the the bagger orders. I get a small commission. Uh, a lot of that goes to Ben's shop. So you guys are actually helping Ben put together his fabrication shop right now with all those. Hawaii and Maine are great. Really? I've, so I've always heard Maine can be kind of a mosquito-infested hellhole in the summer. Um, but, man, the pictures of the fall look amazing. We have fall here. And we have a lot of leaf change. But I've always wanted to go up to like for like a New England fall, right? It just looks so beautiful. I've always loved the Halloween time of year anyways. That's my favorite time of year. I will any specifics I need to look for. Uh, for what? I'm sorry, man. I must have missed. Oh, we should chat. Look me up on Facebook. Wait. I don't know. So remind me of what I'm supposed to talk about. The third pick in bulk LC. Rich, I'll have to look up. Is that the medicinal or the normal uh, the normal bulk pack? Loading my own website on a computer that's live streaming with terrible Wi-Fi. Woohoo! Woohoo! I have a problem with deformed shiitake. I don't know why. Oh, the medicinal. Okay, so you want the third picture in the medicinal. I haven't actually looked at what she has. My guess is it's turkey tail. Oh, you're talking about the box of mushrooms? That's all shiitake. Are you talking about the shiitake pick? Yeah, I've added shiitake and an oyster mushroom strain. No? Okay. Hmm. Oh, no, man. Don't worry. Don't you worry about it. No, you're not out of line chatting with each other. Chat it with each other all you want. Okay. Let's see, Rich. Which one is it? So if it's not the shiitake, do you mean the lion's mane? Okay, so the way I see it right now, there's a turkey tail picture, a picture of... Uh, dried turkey tail chaga and reishi, a picture of lion's mane, um, a picture of a box of shiitake, a picture of oyster, and then a picture of wood ear. Um, I don't have the cordyceps militaris and all that stuff up on there, but my, my uh, thing is I did, uh, wood ear is supposed to be really good for, no, was on turkey tail. Oh, it was the, oh, it was on the turkey tail. Really? Wonder why my turkey tail came up first, but then yours is third. Anyways, um, so I have an oyster, a wood ear, and a uh, shiitake. Those all three are a lot to do with heart health. And then I have lion's mane, which is supposed to be good for your nervous system and brain and lungs. Um, Agaricon, chaga, reishi, and turkey tail for antiviral support. Um, though a lot of them are really just immuno supports. And, of course, I don't make any claims about anything. Um, I'm not a doctor. You should consult a doctor. But you people want these products, so I'm selling these products. I've had a lot of interest in the medicinal. So um, so I've got it's basically kind of a wide-spectrum medicinal package with immunosupport, anti-inflammatory properties, heart health, etc. And so that's... that's uh, kind of an all-inclusive medicinal pack. And I'm hoping to get them listed individually as well, as well as a bunch of other stuff. So 
totally feel the same about showing up. People always want to come when you have stuff to do. That's the best guard dog ever. He was trying to draw them in by going the wrong way. Ah, that's, you're right, Robert. That's exactly right. He was trying to get Jason to go up the to the road away from the house. <laughs> I am sorry because I look to you as such a source of info, which is amazing, but was concerned Mr. Maladu might live near me. And at this point, I got a total monopoly on this area. Oh, dude, like, guys, don't worry about it. You don't have to apologize to me. If you're going to chat on the chat on the channel, you want like that actually frees me up to do other stuff anyways. Right. Um, I mean, even beyond that, like I'm planning on having people come in and doing interviews with people. Um, so we'll do live streams like that, and then we'll have a question and answer afterwards. So I'm hoping to have Robin moderate. But all of that, of course, is after everything settles down and we get some time in. So packing bags and inoculating while enjoying the chat. Heck yeah, Daryl. Glad to do it. Well, guys, I guess with that, I'm going to head off and see what Jason and Robin are into. YouTube is a joke. Why is YouTube a joke? Is that, like, comments from earlier? From, like, where I was talking about? Maybe things are lagging. I don't know. Anyways... Um. Yeah, I'm going to end the chat there for now, guys. Um, we'll do another uh, in a couple of days. I'm working on a video right now. So uh, just keep in mind, everybody, that the medicinal bulk pack is online now. Uh, new strains are going to be heading up soon. Um, we're starting a class very soon. So if any, anyone who's interested in that, uh, I'm going to do an online class where uh, I produce videos and I'm going to send out uh, kits with that will go, will go along from beginning to end. So uh, please stay tuned for all that stuff. Like, subscribe, do all the things, you know. And uh, as always, y'all, keep spawning culture and uh, take care of yourselves. And now the button's disappeared. I think it's just continuing to go.